Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to talk about trees in Rollercoaster Tycoon 2. I made this video to support the Team Trees cause that was started by Mr. Beast. There will be more information about this at the end of the video. Trees are some of the most basic scenery items and they are available in every scenario. Some unlockable themes such as the snow and ice theme and the jungle theme have some extra trees, but the basic trees and shrubs are always available. First I am going to discuss the different types of trees and the ones that you can unlock with the themes, and after that I am going to talk a bit about why trees are some of the best scenery items in the game. These are all the basic trees that you have available in RST2 placed in the order that they are in the scenery window. You can see a whole bunch of deciduous trees, some conifer trees and a few palm trees. These are very commonly found in forested scenarios and in parks with no specific theme. Next up are the decorational trees and the shrubberies. These are also always available and are often found in more detailed and small scale scenery. The shrubberies can be used as underbrush to make your forest look more realistic and the decorational trees are great for decorating rides in a way like this. Now that we've had all the standard trees and bushes, we will go through all the trees that come with the unlockable themes. Quite a few of these themes come from the Time Twister and Bucky Worlds expansions, so if you don't have some of these themes that might be why. First up is the African theme, which gives us 5 big jungle trees, of which one has a bunch of leopards in it and a bush. Next up is the Asian theme, which gives us a bamboo bush and 4 Japanese trees, and is followed by the Australian theme, which gives us only one tree, a very large eucalyptus tree. The next theme is the creepy theme, which has 8 spooky looking trees which are great for decorating a haunted house or something similar. The Dark Age theme gives you another 4 trees, all of which look like they would stand in a big, undisrupted forest. The next tree, which is from the European theme, fits right in with the Dark Age trees and is probably the largest tree we have seen so far. Now it gets a bit weird. These four things may not look like plants or trees, but they still are. They are from the future theme and they are called alien plants and alien trees. The same goes for these three trees, which are from the giant candy theming and they are called candy trees. Up next is a theme that I was a huge fan of when I was a kid, the giant garden theme, which gives you giant grass, a giant carrot, a giant fern and two giant beanstalks. Here is another old favorite of mine, the jungle theming. It gives you 13 different jungle themed trees and plants, which is the most out of any scenery theme. The next theme, the mythological theme, has a couple of interesting trees. You can recognize the forbidden fruit tree from Adam and Eve, and there's also an animated climbing vine tree and a gigantic tree with nymphs in it that is the first tree in this list that is 4x4 four four tiles large. The North American theme has 3 cacti and 3 palm trees that all look really out of place in the visual style of Rollercoaster Tycoon 2, but it also gives a cool giant redwood tree to make up for it. Up next is the pagoda theming, which gives us 4 nice looking trees and a lily pad. The prehistoric theming has a very large mangrove tree and a bunch of weird looking prehistoric swamp plants. These 4 trees that are snow covered versions of 4 of the standard trees come with the snow and ice theming and they're great for any alpine like park. Up next is the South American theming and it gives us some more rainforest trees, including the second tallest tree in the game, only beaten out by the redwood tree from the North American theme. And lastly, the space theme has two very alien looking trees and the spooky theme has three dead trees. Those were all the trees from the different themes and it was a lot more than I expected when I was writing this video. There are a lot of trees to choose from. Sadly some of the ones from the expansion themes look a bit out of place, but there are still plenty of good ones to pick from. Now it's time to discuss the two groups that trees are placed in, small scenery and large scenery. There are quite a few differences between small and large scenery. 
If you're building path or a coaster, small scenery will automatically be sold when you attempt to build through it, while large scenery will stay and tell you that there is scenery in the way. Large scenery is also immune to being removed with the Remove Scenery tool and it can only be removed by right clicking on it. Large scenery gives a bigger scenery boost to right than small scenery, so you need fewer items to max out the scenery bonus. This isn't necessarily more efficient though, as large scenery is larger and often more expensive, so small scenery is often still better. It's very easy to see which trees are large scenery and which trees are small scenery. All trees that occupy a quarter tile or a full tile are small and all trees that occupy more than one tile are large. Now onto the reason that trees are so great as scenery. I'll be focusing mainly on the standard trees and bushes here, but you can do the same with a lot of the other trees. The reason is quite simple, they are incredibly easy to use. If you just plop down a few trees here and there, you can already make your rides look a lot better and it requires very little time and skill. Of course there is great skill involved in making actual realistic and good looking foliage, but for a scenery noob like me, trees are great to just improve your rides a little. For example, these snowy dueling coasters have been decorated with only some hills, some ponds and a whole lot of trees, and while they don't look amazing, they look quite decent in my opinion. The same goes for these dueling wooden coasters. I built this forest by spamming random trees in random places around the coaster, and while it once again isn't anything near top notch quality, it still improves the ride a lot. My point is that an ok looking forest is very easy to build and since a forest contains so many scenery items, you often very quickly max out the scenery bonus for the ride you're building the forest around, which is great for getting a higher excitement rating. You don't necessarily need to build an entire forest to improve your park with some trees. Just placing a few trees here and there around your rides also works wonders, which is what I did in this park. Pick a few tree types that look nice together and simply scatter them around the ride. Small trees like the magnolia tree and the aspen tree are better for this than tall trees as they can more easily fit under tracks allowing for more compactness. Quarter tile trees and especially tiny bushes are even better, but too many of those often doesn't look that great anymore. Speaking of bushes, they, along with the decorational trees, are great for decorating some more organized locations, like a park or a garden. Placing a row of these trees a set distance apart already does wonders. This custom scenario is a great example of that. The rows of bushes and small trees next to the path give it a really calm feeling and it looks amazing. If you don't care about looks and just want to max out the excitement bonus, the tiny bushes can be very useful as they are very unobtrusive. My favorite one for this is the bull rush. You may have seen me use it in past videos to get the excitement bonus. It blends incredibly well into the grass background and they are absolutely tiny. There is one downside to trees that other scenery doesn't have, and that is while most scenery gives you money back as you delete it, Removing trees costs you money. This makes sense from a gameplay standpoint, as it allows scenarios to be made more difficult by filling the park with trees, making it more expensive to build. A great example of this is Fungus Woods. Speaking of making scenarios more difficult with trees, there is a scenario option that makes it forbidden to remove trees and I absolutely hate it. It forces you to build around the trees and it's very annoying to do, especially when combined with the height restriction so that you cannot build above the trees either. Harmonic Hills is a scenario from the expansion packs of RCT1 that has both these restrictions in place and it's my least favorite scenario. And that is everything I have to say about trees in Rollercoaster Tycoon 2. In the game trees don't do much apart from looking pretty and removing an entire forest is no problem. In the real world this sadly doesn't work this way, so we need to make sure that we keep our forests intact. We're not doing such a great job with this at the moment, so YouTuber MrBeast has started the movement to plant 20 million trees. He partnered up with the Arbor Day Foundation and for every dollar donated they will plant one tree. 
If you want to donate, go to teamtrees.org, link in the description, and donate however much you like. If you can't donate or don't want to donate, you can still help by spreading the word or making a video about it yourself if you're a YouTuber. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video.